Muslim-Christian Dialogue Part 1 Christian why have many discussions been held between Christians and Muslims about their beliefs, during the last decade? Muslim I think because we both have several things in common. We believe that there are a Creator who sent many prophets and in Jesus as the Messiah who was denied by the Jews. Our Quran mentions in Surah 345. Remember, O Messenger, when the angel said, O Mary, Allah gives you good news of a child who will be created without a father. Merely by a word from Allah, such as, B, and he will become a child by Allah's will. The name of this child will be the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. He will have a high rank in this world and the afterlife and he will be one of those who are made close to Allah. Dialogues have been held everywhere in Europe, Canada, the United States and Australia. Even the Vatican has participated, discussions were held between Vatican theologians and Egyptian Muslim scholars in Rome in 1970 and in Cairo in 1974 and 1978. Another series of discussions between Vatican theologians and Saudi Arabian Muslim scholars was held in Rome in 1974. Muslims have also been invited by many churches to present Islam. Christian If Christianity is nearly 2,000 years old and Islam more than 1,400 years old, why were these discussions not held centuries ago? Muslim For the last three to four centuries, many Asian and African countries that had been ruled by Muslims were colonized by Britain, France, Holland, Belgium, Spain, and Portugal. Many Christian missionary and religious colonists tried to convert as many Muslims as they could by whatever means they had, giving medical treatment, clothes, food and jobs to the poor. However, they failed to achieve their target. After the Second World War, many Muslims from Asian and African countries emigrated to the West as workers and professionals. This brought them into much closer contact with Christians. Also, students were active in introducing Islam. Christian do you see other reasons why many dialogues are held nowadays even by their respective missions? Muslim I think the gap between both is becoming smaller as each is more tolerant, although both are still competing for converts. I still remember my Christian teacher, who used to say, Muhammad the imposter, the dreamer, the epileptic. You now find fewer writers depicting Islam in such a manner. We Muslims feel closer to the Christians than to the Jews and disbelievers, as the Quran prophesied in Surah 5 hours 82 minutes. You will find, O Messenger, that the people with the most hostility towards those who have faith in you and that which you brought are the Jews, due to their malice, jealousy, and pride as well as the idol worshippers and others who associate partners with Allah. You will also find that the people who are closest in affection to those who have faith in you and that which you brought are those who call themselves Christians. The verse explains that the reason for these people being close to the believers is that there are scholars, ascetics and worshippers among them who are humble and not proud. Good does not enter the heart of a proud person. Some Christian denominations are making tremendous progress now by acknowledging for the first time in history that Muhammad descended from Ishmael through his second son Kedar. The Davis Dictionary of the Bible, 1980, sponsored by the Board of Christian Education of the Presbyterian Church in the USA, writes under the word, Kedar. A tribe descended from Ishmael, Gen. 25 13, the people of Kedar were Pliny Sedrai, and from their tribe Muhammad ultimately arose. The International Standard Bible Encyclopedia quotes the following from A. S. Fulton. Of the Ishmaelite tribes, Kedar must have been one of the most important and thus in later times the name came to be applied to all the wild tribes of the desert. It is through Kedar that Muslim genealogists traced the descent of Muhammad from Ishmael. Also, Smith's Bible Dictionary prints the following, Kedar, Black. Second son of Ishmael, Genesis 25 verse 13. Muhammad traces his lineage to Abraham through the celebrated Koraish tribe, which sprang from Kedar. The Arabs and the Hijaz are called Bani Harb, men of war, and are Ishmaelites as of old, from their beginning. Palgrave says, their language is as pure now as when the Quran was written, 610 after Jesus' birth, having remained unchanged more than 1400 years a fine proof of the permanency of Eastern institutions. The biggest asset brought by Muslim immigrants to the West is not their manpower but Islam, which is now taking root here. Many mosques and Islamic centers have been established and many people have reverted to Islam. 
I prefer the word reverted and not converted, as everybody is born in submission to Allah, Islam, and so, being a Muslim is the nature of every single individual. The parents or the community convert him to Judaism, Christianity, other faiths, or atheism. This is also a proof that Islam is not spreading by the sword but simply by propagation on the part of Muslim individuals or groups. We don't have special missions organized as in Christian missions. The world population has increased 136% from 1934 through 1984, Christianity with 47% and Islam with 235% These figures can be checked in, The Plain Truth, February 1984. In its 50th anniversary issue, quoting from the World Almanac and Book of Facts 1935, and the Reader's Digest Almanac and Yearbook 1983. Christian if all three religions, Judaism, Christianity and Islam, claim to emanate from the one and same Creator, why do they differ? Muslim all prophets from Adam to Muhammad, peace be upon him, were sent with the same message, man's total submission to Allah. In Arabic, this submission is called Islam, which also means peace. Unlike the names Judaism and Christianity, the name Islam was given by Allah Himself as mentioned in Surah 5 3. This day I have perfected your religion for you and completed my favor on you, and have chosen for you Islam as your way of life. Neither Judaism nor Christianity is found in the Bible or in a Bible dictionary. No Israelite prophet said the word Judaism. Jesus never claimed to establish Christianity and never called himself a Christian. The word Christian is mentioned only three times in the New Testament and first by pagans and Jews in Antioch about 43, after Jesus' birth. Read in Acts 11 verse 26. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Later, by King Agrippa II to Paul in Acts 26 verse 28, then Agrippa said unto Paul. Almost thou persuade me to be a Christian. So, the name Christian was first given by foes rather than friends. And finally, by Peter in his letter to comfort the faithful in 1 Peter 4 verse 16, Yet if any man suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. The first Muslim on earth was not Muhammad but Abraham, peace be upon him, who submitted totally to Allah. But Islam as a way of life had been revealed to other prophets prior to Abraham, such as Adam and Noah, peace be upon him. Then Islam follows as the way of life for all humanity. Christian How could Abraham be a Muslim? It is known that he was a Jew. Muslim a Jew? Who told you that? Christian we are taught that, so it must be confirmed by the Bible. Muslim can you show me where in the Bible it says that he was a Jew? If you can't find it quickly, let me help you. Read Genesis 11 verse 31. Christian and Turah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees. To go into the land of Canaan, and they came unto Haran and dwelt there. Muslim So Abraham who was born in Ur of Chaldees could not have been a Jew. First because Ur of Chaldees was in Mesopotamia, which is now a part of Iraq. He was then more an Arab than a Jew. Secondly the name, Jew, came after the existence of Judah, the great-grandson of Abraham. Read further, Genesis 12 verse 4 and 5. Christian. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And into the land of Canaan they came. Muslims so Abraham emigrated to Canaan at the age of seventy-five and the Bible clearly mentioned that he was there a stranger, in Genesis 17 verse 8. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Read now Genesis 14 verse 13. Christian, and there came one that had escaped, and told Abram the Hebrew. Muslim how can you call Abraham a Jew if the Bible itself calls him a Hebrew which means a man from the other side of the Euphrates? It also means pertaining to Eber, a descendant of Shem. Read now in Genesis 32 verse 28 what happened to the name of Jacob after wrestling with God, as the Bible claimed that, God forbid.
Christian 22 That night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants and his eleven sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. 23 After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. 24 So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. 25 When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. 26 Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. 27 The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. 28 Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. 29 Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. 30 So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. Muslim So Abraham was a Hebrew. The descendants of Jacob were Israelites consisting of the twelve tribes. Judah was nicknamed Jew, so that only Judah's descendants were called Jews originally. To know who Moses really was, read Exodus 6 verses 16 to 20. Christian, and these are the names of the sons of Levi according to their generations. Gershon, and Kohath, and Merari. And the sons of Kohath, Amram. And Amram took Jochebed, his father's sister to wife, and she bore him Aaron and Moses. Muslim so Moses was not a Jew, because he was not descended from Judah but a Levite. Moses was the law-giver, Torah is law, to the children of Israel. Christian how can you explain that? Muslim because we are using the Noble Quran as standard. You can explain the Bible and correct the Jewish and Christian prejudice with the context of the Quran. It is the last revealed book and has never been corrupted or adulterated. Its content has been guaranteed by Allah in Surah 2 2, this is the Quran, in which there is nothing of any doubt, neither in terms of its origin, nor in terms of its meaning. It is the word of Allah, guiding those who are mindful of Allah to the way that leads to Him. And also in Surah 15 9, I alone revealed this Quran to the heart of Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a reminder for people. I will guard the Quran from anything being added to it or subtracted from it, or anything in it being exchanged or altered. This verse is a challenge to mankind. It is a clear fact that more than 1400 years have passed and not a single word of this Quran has been changed although disbelievers tried their utmost to change it. But they failed miserably in their efforts. As it is mentioned in this noble verse, we will guard it, by Allah, He has guarded it. On the contrary, all the other holy books, Torah, Psalms, Gospel etc., have been adulterated in the form of additions, deletions or alterations from the original. Christian what does the Quran say about Abraham and Moses that you can deduce from the Bible? Muslim in Surah 3 hours 65 minutes O people of the Scripture, why do you dispute about the belief of Abraham? The Jews claimed that he was a Jew and the Christians claimed he was a Christian. You know very well that Judaism and Christianity appeared a long time after him. Can you not see the falseness of your statement and the error of your claim? And in Surah 3 67 You, people of the Scripture, argued without knowledge with the Prophet, peace be upon him, about your religion and about what was revealed to you. Why, then, do you dispute about Abraham and his religion, which you do not know, as it is not in your book and your prophets did not discuss it? Allah knows the reality of things and you do not know. Abraham was not a Jew or Christian in belief, but he was opposed to all false religions and obedient to Allah alone. He was also not one of those who ascribe partners to Allah, contrary to the idolaters of the Arabs, who claim to follow his belief. In Surah 2 140 Or do you say, O people of the Scripture, that Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob and the prophets from Jacob's descendants were on the path of the Jews or Christians? Ask, O prophet, in reply to them, whether they are more knowledgeable or is Allah. If they claim that they were Jews or Christians, then what they say is false, because they were sent and died before the Torah and the Gospel were revealed. 
This shows that what they say is a lie against Allah and His Prophet, and that they hid the truth of what was revealed to them. No one does greater wrong than someone who hides firm evidence that they have from Allah, as some of the people of the Scripture did. Allah is not unaware of what you do, and you will be rewarded accordingly. Of course, they were not Jews or Christians, as the name, Jews, came after Judah and the name, Christians, came long after Jesus had left. Christian it feels strange to hear the name Allah. Why don't you say, God, if you speak English? Muslim yes, indeed, the name, Allah, seems to be strange to non-Muslims, but this name has been used by all prophets since Adam until Muhammad, peace be upon him. It is close to the Hebrew name of the Creator, i.e. Elo. But the Jews are using wrongly the plural form Elohim, which denotes more than one God. The word Allah sounds closer to the Aramaic word for God used by Jesus, namely, Allah, see Encyclopedia Britannica 1980 under Allah and Elohim. So, while the name Allah is strange to non-Muslims, it is not strange to all prophets from Adam to Muhammad, peace be upon him. As they propagated in principle the same Islam, total submission, and the word Allah denotes the personal name of the Supreme Being. It is not subject to plurality or gender, so there is no such thing as Allahs, or a male or female Allah, as is the case with gods or god and goddess. It is confusing to use the word God, as many English-speaking Christians consider Jesus as God. Even the word, Creator, is also confusing, as many Christians maintain that Jesus created the world. Not only the name Allah is strange, but also the way Muslims worship Allah with ablution, bowing, prostration and fasting, is strange to non-Muslims, but not strange to all of the prophets. While ablution, washing of face, arms, feet, and moistening of the hair, prior to worship is not done by modern Christians, it is required of Muslims and previous prophets. As seen in the following biblical passages, Exodus 40 verses 31-32, and Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet thereat. When they went into the tent of the congregation, and when they came near unto the altar, they washed, as the Lord commanded Moses. Although Paul made many changes in Jesus' teaching, he was faithful in respect to ablution, as seen in Acts 21 verse 26. Then Paul took the men, and the next day, purifying himself with them, entered into the temple. Muslim women perform their prayer with their hair covered, as in 1 Corinthians 11 verses 5 to 6, 13. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn, but if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Judge in yourselves. Is it comely that a woman prays unto God uncovered? Muslims worship with bowing, prostration, and without shoes, as was done by previous prophets, Psalms 95 verse 6, O come, let us worship and bow down, let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, Joshua 5 verse 14. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth, and did worship, 1 Kings 18 verse 42, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and put his face between his knees. Numbers 20 colon 6. And they, Moses and Aaron, fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared upon them, Genesis 17 verse 3, and Abram fell on his face. And God talked with him, saying, and Exodus 3 verse 5 and Acts 7 verse 33, and he, God, said, to Moses, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. A Christian will be very surprised to learn that the pilgrimage, Hajj, which consists of Muslim circumambulation around the Kaaba in Mecca, had been performed by many prophets, even by Israelite prophets. Christian I never read anything about the pilgrimage or the Kaaba in the Bible. Muslim this has been mentioned clearly several times but is usually overlooked by those who read the Bible. For example, 1. Jacob, peace be upon him, on his way to Paden Aram, saw a vision and built the next morning a pillar of stone which he called Bethel, i.e. the house of the Lord, Genesis 28 verses 18-19. 2. Years later the same prophet, Jacob, peace be upon him, was ordered by Allah to go to Bethel, 
Genesis 35 4, 14-15. Jacob removed all of the strange gods prior to going there. Later, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also removed all idols around the Kaaba in Mecca. 3. Another pillar was built by Jacob, peace be upon him, and his father-in-law, Laban, Genesis 31 verses 45-49 And Jacob took a stone, and set it up for a pillar. And Jacob said unto his brethren, Gather stones. And they took stones, and made a heap, and they did eat there upon the heap. And Laban called it Jegersahadutha, but Jacob called it Gailed. Laban said, This heap is a witness between you and me today. That is why it was called Gailed. It was also called Mizpah, because he said, May the Lord keep watch between you and me when we are away from each other. 4. Jephthah and Ammon had a war against each other. Jephthah swore to the Lord in Mizpah of Gilead to sacrifice his only daughter if he won. He did win, and burnt his daughter there alive as an offering to the Lord, Judges 11 verses 29-39. Mizpah, a pillar of stones set up by Jacob and Laban. The pillar of stones acted as a witness to the bond between the two men. As Laban said, the Lord watch between you and me. 5. 400,000 swordsmen from the eleven tribes of Israel swore before the Lord in Mizpah to exterminate the tribes of Benjamin, Judges 20 and 21. 6. The children of Israel, under Samuel, swore in Mizpah to destroy their idols if they won against the Philistines, 1 Samuel 7. 7. The whole nation of Israel assembled in Mizpah when Samuel was appointed king of Israel, 1 Samuel 10. It is obvious now that there is no Mizpah left in the world, except the oldest one in the holy city of Mecca built by Abraham and his son Ishmael. From whom Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, arose later. Muslims are really the followers of all prophets. I can tell you other things about Muslims, Islam and Muhammad in the Bible, but why should you know this if you are not looking for the truth? Christian I am sure of my own belief as a Christian but I would also like to know more about both religions. I sometimes feel ridiculed as a Christian after reading books written by Muslims. Muslim did it affect you in your religious life? Christian yes. I am not going to church as regularly as before. I have been secretly reading books written by Muslims. I have asked several Muslims to explain matters that were not clear to me, but have not yet been satisfied. I am looking for a belief that I can rely on, that can give me peace of mind, that is scientifically acceptable, and one that I don't have to believe in blindly. Muslim I appreciate your sentiments. However, as we are not allowed to force people to become Muslim, I want to be sure that you are really interested in learning the truth before I continue. Christian you mean that I can believe what I want and that nobody can force me to believe in something else? Muslim yes, for the Quran says that there is no compulsion in religion. No one is forced to enter the religion of Islam, as it is clearly the true religion and there is no need to force anyone to believe in it. Truth stands clear from falsehood. Whoever rejects all those things that are worshipped besides Allah and frees himself from them, and has faith in Allah alone, has held on to the strongest rope for salvation on the day of resurrection and which will never break. Allah hears the statements of his servants, knows their actions and will reward them accordingly. Al-Baqarah, 256 Christian then why are Muslims calling other people to accept Islam? Muslim as Christians ask the Jews to accept Jesus, peace be upon him, as the Messiah, we Muslims ask the Christians, as well as Jews and all mankind, to accept Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the seal of the prophets. Our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Convey my message, even one ayah, verse of the Holy Quran. Also, Isaiah mentioned in chapter 21 13, the burden upon Arabia, which means the responsibility of the Muslim Arabs, to spread Islam. Isaiah mentioned this after he saw in a vision a chariot of asses and a chariot of camels, 21:7, and he saw a chariot with a couple of horsemen, a chariot of asses, and a chariot of camels. And he hearkened diligently with much heed. The chariot of asses turned out to be Jesus, peace be upon him, who entered Jerusalem, John 12 verse 14, Matthew 21 verse 5. Who then was the chariot of camels? 
it could not be other than Muhammad, peace be upon him, who came about six hundred years after the advent of Jesus. If this is not accepted, then this prophecy has not yet been fulfilled. Christian your explanation stimulates me to review the Bible more carefully. I would like to have more discussions with you. Muslim yes, if you are successful in this world, it doesn't mean that you will be successful in the hereafter. The hereafter is much better and more lasting than this life. People are now becoming more materialistic and secular. Let's meet some more and discuss the differences frankly and without prejudice. Islam is based on reason, and you should not just accept it. Even your Bible says, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 21. Christian you mentioned just now a chariot of camels, from Isaiah and drew the conclusion that it was Muhammad. Is he then prophesied in the Bible? Muslim sure. Christian in the Old or New Testament? Muslim in both. But you cannot recognize him in the Bible as long as you don't believe in the oneness of God, as long as you still believe in the Trinity, the divinity of Jesus, peace be upon him. The divine sonship of Jesus. And the doctrines of original sin and atonement. All of these were made by men. Jesus mentioned what Isaiah had prophesied that people would worship God uselessly and believe in doctrines made by men. But in vain they do worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, Matthew 15 verse 9.